Welcome back guys, my name is Hiroko Murakami, here with Nova Edge Academics, and today we'll be going over topic A4, rigid body mechanics and IB physics. Now first let's start off with talking about torque. What is torque? Well, torque is essentially the rotation force, how strong I am rotating in a certain direction. And so it is basically force, but in rotation. And the best way to show you a few examples is, for example, a door, right? How do we do, how do you open a door? Well, we press down on this handle by providing a torque. It is a rotationary force, right? We also open the door by either pushing or pulling. And we push or pull from this center, right? And this is a hinge, right? So at a certain distance from the uh, center of rotation, we provide a rotationary force. And the benefit of torque is we're able to apply so much more force by taking advantage of the distance, right? For example, if I were to turn from this side, it's a lot easier than if I were to push from this side. And the reason why is because of this concept called torque. We take advantage of that in using as a wrench, right? We use wrench to unscrew, even if it's very difficult to do it our, with our hands. Uh, we also do that with lifting a car, right? Lifting a car is very heavy, but we can do that with taking advantage of this rotationary force. The formula for torque is force times the radius, right? So as, 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 as you increase the radius from the center of rotation, the more easy it is to rotate an object, right? So that's what we call torque. Now we do have this sine theta here that we need to be careful of. Why? Because this corrects the angle so that the force and the rotation, the radius are perpendicular to each other. And we had something similar previously. When I wanted to define work, work was equal to force times displacement times it by cosine theta, right? So if I wanted to drag a suitcase, this is a displacement, I needed to use cosine theta so that the force and displacement are parallel to each other, right? Exactly the same thing, except now I need them to be perpendicular with each other. So I use sine theta instead. Now you're gonna see here, if I were to apply a force of F3 here, Right, so I'm applying a force this way, but the radius of this wrench is that long. I actually need to take R sine theta, okay? So R sine theta is going to be making the force and the radius perpendicular to each other, okay? Now let's do a practice problem. Pause the video and give this a try. Okay, in part A, we already know that F2 and the radius are already perpendicular to each other. So I actually don't need to do sine theta. Right, so I can just do torque is equal to FR, which in this case is gonna be equal to 35 Newton times 48 to the power of 10 to the power of negative two meters. That's gonna give me 16.80 Newton meter. Let's do part B. Well, I need the torque to be equal to each other. Right? Isolate F3. I get F3 is equal to 42.73 Newton. Okay? Uh, correct to two sig fig, I get 43 Newtons. Okay? Now, same thing with force, right? We had force addition. We can also do the same thing with torque. We can add torque, but they have to be going in the same clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. So as an example, if I were to rotate the wheel with my left hand with 30 Newton meter, and with my right hand for 40 Newton meter, the net torque of this system is 70 Newton meter, right? However, if I do 30 Newton meter, and I do 40 Newton meter, then the net torque is negative 10 Newton meter in this direction. So I'm going to quantify anti-clockwise as negative, right? So that's going to be negative 10 Newton meter. Okay. Now let's talk about angular displacement. So before we proceed, we need to define a certain quantities, including angular quantities, because in rigid body mechanics, we deal with angular quantities. The first angular quantity we're going to be dealing with is displacement. We actually already did the angular velocity from before, where we defined it as the linear velocity divided by R. Do you remember that? 
if you don't then check our previous video we can do the same thing for angular displacement so angular displacement is going to be the displacement over radius and that's going to give us radians okay angular velocity is radians per second angular displacement is just radians we can also express it this way as change in angular displacement over change in time okay now that's the same thing for acceleration actually what does it mean for angular acceleration well if i'm rotating something and it's going faster and faster and faster then there's definitely acceleration in a rotationary way right so this angular acceleration is actually equal to linear acceleration over r and we can do the same thing we can quantify it as change in angular velocity over change in time very similar to where acceleration is equal to change in velocity over time right we just replace it with angular quantity okay so let's do a practice problem pause the video and give this a try okay calculate the angular velocity this should be fairly simple it's completing one rotation in 3.9 seconds one rotation is equal to 2 pi radians in 3.9 seconds so that's going to be giving me 1.61 rad per second okay b what is your total angular displacement after one minute well i just have to multiply this by times to get the angular displacement and in one minute it is 60 seconds so i just multiply by 60 so i displaced by 96.6 .6 radians let's do another one a motor spinning at 24 rotations per second accelerates uniformly to 33 rotations per second. Calculate its angular acceleration. So first, let's discover the first velocity, right? So angular velocity initial is equal to 24 rotations per second. 24 rotations times 2 pi per second. So that's 150.7 rad per second. The final veloc uh, angular velocity is equal to 33 rotations Per second that is 207.2 rad per second so if I were to use this definition final minus initial divided by T I get 207.2 minus 150.7 divided by 6.7 seconds I get 8.44 rad per second squared okay now in order to make things simple we can use equations of motion we don't actually need it but it makes it a lot simpler now we've seen for linear motion all of these that we've used in projectile motion right well if i were to replace every component okay with angular quantities then i get the equations of angular motion so example, displacement, displacement, velocity, 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 right? So these are just changing it from linear quantity to angular quantities. So let's use this equations of motion to calculate. Pause the video and give this a try. Okay, so first, well, typically we would just do this is equal to change in this over change in time, right? That's what we did in previous one. It's actually the same formula here, okay, because this is equal to this minus this over t okay and so that's what i'm going to be using that's going to be equal to 97 minus 54 divided by 3.2 okay what is its angular displacement during the acceleration well let's use this one if i were to use that one Two forty one point six radians part C. Okay, then it decelerated to rest during an angular displacement on one fifty six. So I know this is equal to one fifty six. I know final is equal to zero, and initial is going to be ninety seven rad per second. So I have three components, then I can find the fourth one. Determine the ac angular acceleration. I just picked the one which doesn't have time, so I'm going to use this one. 
97. So it's going to be 0 squared is equal to 97 squared plus 2 this 156. Okay, so isolating for angle, angular, I get 30.16 rad per second squared. Making it to 2 sig fig, that is 30 rad per second squared. Okay, another one. Pause the video and give this a try. Okay, 15 RPM is 15 rotations per minute, which means that is 15 times 2 pi, that is 1 rotation per 60 seconds. That is equal to 1.57 rad per second. That is the angular velocity. Okay. But the linear velocity at the tip, we can get V is equal to WR. One twenty five point six meters per second. That's quite fast. Okay, a point 10 meters from the axis of rotation. So at 10 meters, I'm going to have the same rotations per minute, right? If I, if this guy is rotating around, the speed at which it's rotating is going to be different, but the angular velocity are the same, right? Because they're both going together, one, two, three, etc. right? So I can actually use that. V is equal to WR, 1.57 times 10, which is 15.7 meters per second. So you can see how different the velocity, the linear velocity is at each point given different radius. Give this another try. Okay. Initial angular velocity is zero. Acceleration is 5.7 and T is 5.0 seconds. So WF is equal to this. So zero plus 5.7 times five. It's gonna be equal to 28.5 rad per second. All right, part B. Okay, total angular displacement. Let's just do this one. Seventy one point two five radians. How many rotations does it complete in five seconds? Well, I just need to convert this and divide that by 2 pi because one rotation is 2 pi radians. So how many rotations? 71, 2 pi, divided by 2 pi, 11.35 rotation per uh, rotations. Okay. Okay, so now the initial angular velocity is 28.5 rad per second. Time is equal to 18.2 seconds. And the final angular velocity is zero. So now I need to calculate how many rotations are completed during this time. So I need the angular displacement. So I get that 41.3 rotations. Now interpreting graphs and being able to draw graphs is also a very important skill for this. It's very simple. It's the same thing as linear uh, components. So for example, if I have a displacement time graph of that, I take the slope. So let's say the slope is equal to 2. Then it's 2. And I go do the acceleration. It's going to be zero, right? There, the slope is equal to zero on the velocity time graph. So exactly the same, except now if I replace this by 
angles and W and this, I get the same thing. So always take the slope from before, apply it over and over. And if you want to reverse, you take the area under the curve. If you're not sure how to do this, then check our previous video on uh, linear uh, time graphs. So first let's draw the angular velocity time graph. Okay, so this is this is what would, we would expect the velocity, the angular velocity time graph to look like. Now, this is not very precise because I don't have a grid paper. However, I can draw what the displacement time graph would look like based off of this. Right, so 4, 10, 15, right? So remember that this is negative because it's going backwards, okay? So if I were to draw this, then I would get that. Twelve. It remains the same. And then it would go back down. Like that. Now, why is this curved? Because the slope at each point corresponds to the value of the angular velocity. Okay? Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you find these really useful, then consider giving us a like and subscribing to our channel. For questions, leave them down below in the comment and we'll try to get back to you. For more academic resources, visit our website at novaedgeacademics.com. We offer one on one tutoring service as well as college admission strategy. Uh, let us know what you'd like us to cover next and we'll see you in the next video.